All right, uh, we're at Western Armor Tech today here in our motorcycle power sports technology division, and we're going to make a couple different videos today. One of the uh, settings we're going to do before we put what's called the float bowl back on and in place is going to be to set the float height. And so if we can start to zoom in or get in here, I'm going to show a couple different examples of some improperly set up carburetors. Now, what I'm going to be referencing is right here, and you'll see the what we ideally want is we want these to be parallel. So we want, let's see if I can hold this, I want this edge and this edge, typically on most motorcycles, we talked about that guys, we wanted those to be parallel with each other. Ring a bell? Well, in this particular situation, and one thing we always have to do is we always want to go to a manual, and we're, here's a special tool for setting float height, and what we're going to do is we're going to read in the manual what this measurement should be in millimeters typically. So what's really neat about this tool is I can take and put it on here real quickly, see what the actual float height is set at, and you want to grab your veneer caliper, we'll take a look at that too, another way of doing it. So this surface to the top of the float. Where we have to be careful is you guys, just the other day here, uh, we were doing a Kawasaki Prairie. You guys remember doing that in the lab? And they made a big deal about that we need to be to the bottom of the ceiling surface. And now that one had, the carburetor had a little ridge on it. It wasn't flat like this one is. The edge of this is flat, so it's really easy to go down to that one. So you need to make sure and follow the service manual procedures so that you can be exact. But here's a picture out of the manual that we used the other day. And there's a couple different things you're going to notice is that there's typically two ways that we're going to set float height. We have this possibility of using what they call a special tool in most manuals, where it's a hose that will hook up to the bottom of the float bowl. So you have an adapter that would go in here, and then you would take a piece of hose and set it on the side of this body assembled with the float in place. And we would what would happen is when you open the drain screw, the fuel's going to fill up in that tube. You'll have a baseline mark there, and then you're going to be able to see where the fuel level actually sits because gravity is going to fill that hose up, and you'll see that level. And then the manual will say plus or minus, you know, a millimeter from this edge or three millimeters or something. So we looked at, but it's not as easy to do. And uh, it is nice to do on a motorcycle, but I don't believe it's just much as a common practice. So well, how we're going to set float height is the more common way where we're going to bend this float <clears throat> in relationship to the body of the carburetor, measure that difference, and match it up to the manual. So let me give a couple examples here. And The first situation that I uh, have demonstrated here is we purposely set this really rich. And what happens is the float is actually bottoming out. It's physically touching the body. And what you can see is from the relationship of this carburetor and the relationship of this float is that it's tipped in or it's downwards. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this carburetor into a normal operating uh, situation. Guys, what, what did we compare this to in our house? A toilet. So it's when you fill your toilet, water comes in there and there's a float that shuts that water off and there's a level that we want to set that at. And that's what this float is doing. So the further this float can come up into the carburetor, what condition does it produce? A rich condition because we get that extra fuel available and ready for our jets and we're going to have rich running conditions. Now, if it was set like this, what would the condition be? Lean. It'd be a lean condition because it's going to shut it off, not having as enough, enough fuel available for the jets. We have a lean condition. So that happy medium or that specification in the manual we said is typically 90 degrees. Well, now I want you to focus in or you can see if this is good. In this picture here of the Kawasaki manual, they're showing how the carburetor is tilted on side. Do you guys remember that uh, number of degrees that I talked about in class? 35, 35 degrees. So we have, a, a, we have a, a 90 and then we would have 45. Okay, and 35 happens to be right where the float is just going to start to hit that uh, the needle and seat there. And inside that needle, straight blade screwdriver, in this needle here, there's a little spring in here. Now, my guys are sharp. They've had quite a bit of training on this so far. What's that little spring for, guys? So it can't put too much pressure on the needle to embed it into the seat. Right, so when this is bouncing up and down, it hits that kind of spring set. It's called a damper, a damper right? So what we're trying to do is cushion that, okay, so it isn't so abusive. This one's a rubber tip. They last a really long time. On the steel tip ones, we said that uh, they don't tend to last as long. They really wear a groove in there. So what <clears throat> the point I'm making 
is if we don't turn the carburetor that 35 degrees, we put too much weight on that, we collapse that, and now there's no way to duplicate the, the specification that the OEM has provided us, correct? So a good reminder there and good practice. So I'm gonna hold this uh, body up here again and demonstrate that. So I'm gonna get this to where it just starts to touch, okay? That's a rich condition one. We'll flip this around here and we're going to demonstrate a lean one and hopefully the camera's doing a good job of that. I mean, look at that, that's extremely lean. So what my, my guys are gonna do right now is, one of you guys are gonna adjust this back to a uh, correct condition where we're just gonna set it parallel to each other. And you wanna set that one. Here's a screwdriver, you can go ahead and just use that pick, you should be able to get in place. <clears throat> now he's gonna make sure and hold that up so that he doesn't push the needle into place. If they wanted to, they could go ahead and just remove it. Why don't we do that just for a demonstration there? They go ahead and remove that, and it's gonna be a little bit easier for him to adjust that, that float tab. Get a shot of the camera here of what we're actually adjusting. Yep. Now the other thing he's doing is he's paying attention here. Since he's been trained here, he's gonna kinda of do both sides here and make sure that he stays flat. He doesn't want to tip that or angle that, so sometimes you'll actually come in from the middle because what we don't want to have happen is we don't want to tweak this float. Go ahead and hold that for me. We don't want to tweak the float where it ends up like this because then we have two different levels. Does that make sense? So I'll let you actually uh, make your adjustment there. Your pin and needle are back there for you to try and assemble it. I'm just going to roughly check it here, and it's, it's just a hair. It's just a hair lean, so we need a little bit more. Now, let me ask you guys something. As far as being fast, if you can already tell that this is off, do you need to measure it? No. No, so what we want to do is we want to go ahead and we want to get that where it visibly looks perfect, and then we start to get our tools out. Now, maybe the manual said to set that at a measurement that was going to have that where it wasn't parallel, and then that would be more particular. It's a little bit rich. So we went way too much. Now flip it. You get a perfect point here how it's crooked. Now when I'm looking at my side, it is dramatic and I can actually see the other float. Can you guys see this? <clears throat> I can actually see the other side. So what's happened is the float itself has been tweaked or it's been bent a little bit. So I'm gonna take it, get these level here. You see how, see how I did that? So I got those level. And now this one's too rich, so since he needs to bend this tab, he needs to bend the tab down, he can take and just hold this up like so, okay, because I'm not going to hurt the needle, and now you can try and go down and push that tab down. And you've got to pick, that's not an ideal tool, so if we need to get you a screwdriver, a screwdriver here if you can use that. Small increments, he's just going to push down in the middle there. Yeah, just try that, check it, check your work, go to 35. You want to go a little bit more, don't you? But he's made some progress and he's been nice and even because of how he's supporting the carb with his hand there. A little more. So you kind of got an idea how firm you have to push it, what it's doing for you. So there you go. Too far that time. This is just the reality. Is this your first time doing it, Shane? Yes, sir. It's his first time doing it here. So you'll kind of get that feel to see how much that metal's going to bend there for you. I bet you this time he's going to get pretty close. Man, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. We've got a little tweak going on. I'm going to. I'm going to adjust this a little bit, like so. And then what we'll do is we'll use Danny's veneer cap. Look at, can you, can you get a close up here? Here's another thing, or what we call a witness mark or whatnot. You guys remember when we were doing the prairie and we had the old gas because we hadn't cleaned it yet? And it created that witness mark on there that was going to deceive us if we continue to use that. But if you look at these, uh, these type of uh, um, carbon floats, if you will, or whatnot. Can you see this, the manufacturing seam? Yep. And I'm gonna get that at 35, and you see the body? How's that look? Pretty even. Rockstar. So let's let's go ahead and measure it, and you can check your work with a caliper and see what that looks like. So. Can you kind of 
rotate yourself towards the camera there to show what you're doing there. A little less of an angle there. Then just flip the tool so that the flat hits the other side. Beautiful. Okay, so that one's back uh, and good to go. Now that is how we would check float height. So our next video, what you're going to see us do is uh, a lot of people will choose to just put the carburetor together and put it on the bike. We don't want to do that. We're going to uh, check to make sure that these float needle, these uh, seats are actually seating and not leaking fuel. So watch for our next video on that one.